Hello everyone, and welcome to the 404 Games Not Found First Look series. I'm Verlaine, and this is 7 Days to Die by Fun Pimps Entertainment. This game's been greenlit on Steam, and the footage you're seeing is of the game in its Alpha 1.1 build, so it's very early into development at this point. It's been described as zombie survival meets Minecraft, and if you want to see more of this game, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do a follow-up video for you, and I'm going to show you now some footage that I took to give you my thoughts and a review into this game. So, what I'm going to show you today is a bit of the world, what it looks like, what you can do, a little bit of the crafting, and just how brutal this game's nighttime survival is, as well as discuss a few features currently available, as well as some more to be included. So let's start with the plot. The plot's currently, it puts you in the year 2034, just after a third world war, which is why everything you're seeing seems so destroyed and barren, and something in the nuclear fallout caused the dead to reanimate into zombies, and some others into the special zombies. The object of the game follows a very simple process, similar to all the other zombie survival games, and that is just to survive as long as possible. Multiplayer is possible, so you can play with friends, assuming you have the knowledge on how to do so, which I think is a nice touch. It adds more than it takes away, however, that by no means makes the single player any less rewarding. The zombies in the game are typical walking zombies, they're not much of a threat, they can only kill you if you sit still and let them, however, during the night, or inside, with no light source, they can sprint, and this again I think is a nice feature, it does mean there's an element of danger every time you go into a building due to zombies running around in the small spaces with you. I would like to see more individual models for each zombie, which I know is a feature they've already begun to implement, but right now there's only a select few and a lot of the zombies do look the same, which I don't really like. The sound in this game, however, does leave something to be desired. The volume is somehow cranked to 11, even after turning it down to minimal, and the sound effects themselves sound like they'd be more at home on an early 90s console or that they've just been plucked straight from a free noise sample pack that you could grab on Google. The zombies only have a few vocal noises, and when they hold together, the noise becomes less scary and more just repetitive, and it's annoying. This is what it sounds like. Yeah, it's that kind of annoying. Swinging or hitting anything sounds more comical than realistic, and placing, breaking, interacting with most objects just sounds off. For example, one of the first things I did was punch a brick, only to be greeted by the gong of whacking on a metal drum. Your own character's voice sounds like he enjoys being hit more than he tries to avoid it, and the noises you make they just feel out of place, they're mistimed, or they're just strange on occasion. This game as I said, is in very early alpha, so don't take this criticism too harshly, as it can and most likely will change, but it's something worth knowing now in case you're interested in playing the game as it is. Additionally, the animations are sluggish. Walking feels like you're floating through treacle, and trying to jump feels like you're stumbling with something constantly pushing you downwards. Again, the zombies have limited animations, they've got run, they've got walk, attack, and jump, and they don't blend together particularly well, and I hope this gets fixed as to really add to the survival experience. Which brings me to my next point. The crafting in this game is great. You need to search around for different items, some you can find in the raw forms, others you need to craft them together, just to find a location and secure it so you can live through the night. It really adds to the experience of zombie survival knowing that I have to scavenge through abandoned cars and trash piles looking for a sheet of metal, just to fortify a door or a window to stop a zombie breaking through. It's something a lot of other zombie survival games are really lacking. The crafting itself could use a tutorial though, or at least a few tips or hints just to teach you exactly what to do. Well, just even how to navigate the inventory a little easier, as to new players it could seem a bit overwhelming trying to craft with any zombies remotely nearby. But overall, the amount of things already in the game to craft, combined with new items added each update, this feature really does capture the Minecraft element that this game was to show off. 
The weapons in the game do require some element of scavenging to find, with the best ones often being in the places the zombies tend to hoard around, so scrapyards and complexes and houses and stuff. Ammo feels precious, especially during the nights, and the game does a really good job of rewarding you for exploration. That pistol that you found in the sports bag next to the abandoned car three miles ago down the highway might just get you out of this situation and back to base because you had the sense to check it. Which brings me to my last point, the world itself. Currently, it's pretty big. It's got biomes similar to Minecraft, so you can go from the desert to grassland to forest to some hills. And although it doesn't look very seamless, and it is kind of obvious, this is a feature I approve of. Some other games in the genre give you a big map to explore, but you can learn that map. It's always the same. This game's world is set to be randomly generated each time, offering you a new experience every time you play. But they want to go a step further. They want to give chance for the players to build their own worlds, to be able to scope their land and its features exactly how they please, and bring their friends into play with it. Now this could be an ambitious goal, which is being blown out of proportion, or it could be exactly what they describe it as. But at this point in development, I would say, get the other problems fixed first. Make this game feel more like a game before you hand it over to players to show their friends, and then you roll out this feature. Staying alive in seven days to die means finding food and drink. A task not too difficult to accomplish considering it's 2034 after a third world war. And not being eaten by the horde of mindless dead people. You should build a base, or be a nomad and move from location to location with your friends. Or on your own. It's a decent game with a lot of potential, but I personally don't regret buying it. And despite the sounds and animations both making this game feel a bit comical, the crafting and survival aspects more than make up for it. But I do want to see more features added, and I'm hoping the amount of support this game gets only pushes them to make something more special. Something easy to use, fun to play, and just something that you can create that zombie-proof fortress you've always wanted with. And that's all for my review into Seven Days to Die. If you've got this game or you're thinking of buying it, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you think, I'd love to hear from you. You can get into the alpha by buying the game from their website, so go check that out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more first looks. Thank you very much for watching, see you later.